Before we jump into today's video, I just want to ask you to please like and subscribe. It really helps me and the channel out. Anyways, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Joe Biden and John Kerry are two mainstays in the modern Democratic Party. Joe Biden has served as United States Senator, President, and Vice President, while John Kerry has served as Senator, Secretary of State, and the Special Envoy for Climate. The two men have ascended in American politics in a way that few others have. Both men also happen to be Catholics. The reason that this video is going to be combined into one is the simple fact that the faith of these two men did not play as much of a role in their public service career as it did for Al Smith or even JFK. Biden and Kerry simply did not face the same level of scrutiny over their faith as our previous two examples. And so, this episode is really based around the question of why, and to answer that, we should look at the two men together. We will start then with John Kerry. Kerry was born into a political and highly influential family in 1943. His father, Richard Kerry, served in the Army Air Corps before becoming a diplomat at the State Department. Kerry's mother, Rosemary Forbes, was a member of the massively wealthy and influential Forbes family. Kerry was raised as a Catholic, however it should be noted that Kerry was never exactly devout. Sure, he professed his faith and seemed to be quite genuine in his belief, but as we will later see, his faith was never at the center of either his public nor private persona. Kerry would eventually attend Yale, where he would graduate with a degree in political science. Afterwards, he would serve for about five years in the United States Naval Reserve. Kerry's service would eventually be the base for his strong anti-war activism. Kerry would go on to serve as Lieutenant Governor of Massachusetts before being elected Senator in 1984. While in the Senate, Kerry had a slightly strange record. He was certainly on the left side of the Democratic Party, and most of the time was staunchly liberal. But he did have some strange votes that seemed to stick out among his general voting record. For instance, Kerry did support the Iraq War, while still professing to be strongly anti-war. In 2004, Kerry would be nominated to serve as president, and would face off against George Bush. He did not win. Let's stick a pin in Kerry for a moment and talk about Joe Biden before coming back and talking about the two campaigns together. Joe Biden was born in 1942 to a, at least at the time, fairly wealthy family. They certainly did not have the money of, say, the Kennedys nor the Forbes family, but they were decently well off. Biden's father, Joseph Robinette Biden Sr., owned a decently successful business and the family was able to purchase a home in the Long Island suburb of Garden City in New York. However, the family would eventually fall onto hard times, around the time Biden was seven years old, and they would be forced to move in with Biden's grandparents in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Biden was an unexceptional young man. His grades were never great, but they weren't bad either. But it was enough to earn a degree in political science and eventually a law degree from Syracuse University. Biden would practice law for a few years before eventually running for U.S. Senate in 1972, a campaign he would win. Sadly, Biden's wife and infant daughter would die in a car accident just a few weeks after his election, while both of his sons would suffer serious injuries. Biden seriously struggled in the months after the accident, and very nearly resigned his Senate seat. It was only through the intervention of several of his future Senate colleagues that he ended up taking the oath in the same hospital room that his sons were recovering in. Biden would go on to serve in the Senate until 2009. Biden was almost certainly a centrist Democrat by any measure. However, his Senate service is so long that it's almost impossible to paint a full picture without it being its own video. Biden would eventually be the vice presidential nominee on the Obama ticket in 2008, and would serve as vice president from 2009 to 2017, where he was actually quite influential and played a strong role as President Obama's right-hand man. Biden would take a break from public politics during Donald Trump's presidential term before returning in 2020 to take on President Trump. Biden would go on to win that election and become the second Catholic president. Now, as you can probably tell if you've watched the previous episodes in this series, I'm glossing over quite a bit more than normal here. And truly, that is because this series is really based around how the Catholic faith affected the respective campaigns, not necessarily the whole campaign. If you would like a video on the full campaigns, then please let me know by commenting. These two campaigns are quite different from JFK's or Al Smith's. For JFK, and especially for Smith, the issue of being a Catholic played a central role in their campaigns, and in the case of Smith, was really the reason he was unable to obtain the office. However, for Kerry and Biden, 
the role of their faith was not nearly as central, and that is because of the simple fact that politics had changed. In the subsequent decades after the election of JFK, being a Catholic was not really as big of a deal for potential public office candidates. In fact, the question of faith had really changed from what denomination are you to are you religious? A person's denomination was no longer as big of a deal as long as they professed to being Christian. This change in dynamic affected how the two candidates used their faith. For John Kerry, it was an issue that he was fine with mostly ignoring. Kerry was fine with saying that he was Catholic, but he also didn't parade the issue. In fact, Kerry would actually go on to lose the Catholic vote to George Bush in his presidential election by about 5 percentage points. Being a Catholic simply wasn't a part of Kerry's image, and he was able to effectively ignore the issue simply because most people didn't really care. In many ways, he did what Al Smith had tried to do, simply ignore it. The issue of faith is a little bit different for Joe Biden. Biden is deeply Catholic. It is an integral part of his person, both in public and private. And because of that, it became a part of his campaign as well. Biden was able to use the moral character of being a Catholic almost like a weapon. He promised to restore the soul of the nation by using his Catholic teachings. Funnily enough, Biden actually won the Catholic vote by about 5 percentage points in 2020. Now, I don't think we can say that Biden purely won that vote simply because he embraced his Catholic faith, but I do believe that it played a large part. So overall, the picture here is one of declining importance. For Kerry and Biden, the issue of being a Catholic simply wasn't that important, and in fact, it served to boost Biden by giving him a platform to base his message around. Before we wrap up today, let's do a quick summary of all that we have discussed and try to figure out how being a Catholic has affected those that wish to serve in the highest office. The story would really start with Al Smith. Smith was the first Catholic to really be taken seriously in his quest to become president. Before him, the stigma around Catholics was just too strong to overcome. Even though Smith would eventually lose, he did break that ceiling and allowed those who came after him to point to him as an example. If Al Smith is the opening in our story, then JFK is the turning point. Not only would JFK be elected president, but he really marked the point where being a Catholic was no longer a death blow to presidential ambitions. Kerry and Biden are the two recipients of those who struggled before them. Both really had the option to completely ignore the issue of their faith, and in fact had the option to embrace it as well. By the time we get to Biden and Kerry, being a Catholic is really the same thing as being any other type of Christian, at least among the general electorate. In many ways, the story of Catholics in the presidency is a story of incremental progress and eventually full acceptance. So that's it. This is the last episode in the three-part series on Catholics in the Presidency, and the first series to be completed on this channel. I really appreciate you watching, and I hope you learned something. If you liked it, then please like and subscribe. It really helps grow the channel, and it just motivates me to make more content. I, I am sorry this episode is a shorter than normal, but there just isn't as much here when compared to Smith or JFK. I will be back to normal length on Wednesday. Peace.